Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to the debut episode of Oh Man, That's Awful on Radio Titans Podcast Network. I'm Woody Roski, and with me is... My name is Kevin Corcoran. And we are two Los Angeles comics who are uh, gathering every week with a couple of interesting guests to share some of the most comically awful stories of, that they've encountered. And uh, sometimes it'll be, the first guest will always be somebody that you may not know as well, but you should know. We're going to be bringing in like uh, great comics or writers or sometimes average people that have uh, had something funny to happen to them that's just terrible. You know, like on the news, like when you see a McDonald's getting robbed and somebody uh, behind the counter manages to save the day in a funny fashion. I'm going to try and find them, tell their story. It's a weird example to pick. <laughs> or, I don't know, you know, there's all, there's all sort of crazy news always. And so, getting people that have weird things happen, and then they come and they tell their story, We find, and then uh, they, uh, you know, we talk to them for like the first half, and then the second half, we turn the tables on a uh, comic or writer or performer that uh, is fairly well known. So, uh, today, our two special guests are a man named John Moody, who's a really funny comic here in Los Angeles, but he also has had some interesting jobs in the past, and he worked in parking enforcement, giving people uh, parking tickets. Hold your and, applause. Yeah, right. And uh, also Brian Kiley, one of LA's most popular uh, comics on the scene, who's been a veteran writer for Conan and been on some really top shows as a stand-up as well, like Letterman. So, gentlemen, uh, thanks for coming in. Sure, sure. Thanks for having us. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for bringing me in. All right. So uh, and along the way, uh, whenever if one of us says, oh, man, that's awful, as, uh, or some variation thereof as part of hearing these horrible stories unfold, uh, we're going to hit this bell. And every time the bell goes off, an angel gets his wings. Now, we're going to give a dollar to uh, a charity of the week and uh, total up some whopping sum, like five bucks, 11 bucks, and Hold send your it applause. Off. It's our pleasure. Really. Oh, man, that's awful. Because we- oh, look at you. You're just chilling. <laughs> just we're the podcast that cares uh, so, uh, so much. One of the most charitable podcasts in Koreatown, for sure. <laughs> Top yeah. five, easy. Top five. We've been yeah. on for two minutes. <laughs> I'd say we're the most charitable podcast that's been on for two minutes in Koreatown on a Saturday ever. Now that I'm sure of. Yeah. You awesome. may applaud now. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you don't, that's awful. <laughs> so nice. uh, we're going to start with uh, John uh, telling uh, some of his uh, experiences and uh, having some fun with that. So you worked as a parking enforcement guy, absolutely one of the most beloved jobs that anybody in society has. Mm-hmm. They, people must have really embraced you. Who did you work for? I, I worked for the um, LADOT Los Angeles Department. Department of Transportation and in, in some type of weird thing. You remember years back, everyone is this thing called the secret and one of the principles was, you know, you if you want something, you have sure. to think it and if you didn't want something, don't think it because that'll come true as well. You know, like this is some type of utopia. Well, I always said I never wanted to become a parking enforcement officer <laughs> and maybe I concentrated on that sure. too much and sure. ended up becoming a parking enforcement oh. officer. Yeah. I mean, did you actually really, or are you just kidding or did you really think I don't want to do that? Was there a reason? I mean, you would always that? think that, like, God, that'd sure. be an awful job to have, you know, <laughs> and at one point, like, it was like 2010 when the economy crashed, you know, I'm not, I'm a non-established comic and actor, so, you know, you got to have a day job of some sorts, and I said, you know what, I'll take the test, like most auditions, I probably won't get it, but I have to at least try <laughs> to have some type sure. of income, you know, steady income, and besides, it was paying at that time, it started at like 45000 I figured, Jeez. you know what, do it for a little bit, stack some cash, and, uh, you know, get back out there, get a part-time job, or hey, maybe book a job, <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I took the test, um, and uh, like, like 900, 1,000 people took the test. Uh, I scored high enough to get an interview, and then I had to take a 1,400-question psychological evaluation. What? Yeah, 1,400 questions, man. Wow. It, it's like you, you don't want the job, but you're doing so much for a job you don't want. It's, wow. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. we – give Go us ahead. the answers. <laughs> I mean, what, now, why did they have so now, many questions? Is I mean, it true that the answer was B for all of them? Everyone? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. The, you know what? One of the questions was like when you get to question number, I think it was like 1,200, it was, are you still paying attention to what you're writing? Oh, because at a certain point, sure. you're just like, yes, no, yes, no, A, B, C, D, E, yes, no, yes, wow. no, yes, no, yes, Jeez. no. Oh. And it becomes wrote at a certain point. And at yeah. a certain point, I wasn't paying attention. I was, are you still paying attention? I almost circled no. Because, like, oh, man. 
man, I just want to get get done was with it, this. Was it timed? Like they wanted to make sure you were answering quick to know it was a real no, answer? No, well, you had you had four hours to do it, but they were just trying to get an evaluation of you. I got called back in because they wanted to know if I had ever been in fights. And I said, yeah, had fights when I was like eight years old and sure. I fought a buddy. And I had to talk, talk to a psychiatrist because she's like, so why did you fight Larry Williams when oh you were my eight God. years old? Why, wow. were you, why were you so angry at eight? And I said, well, Larry asked me for a piece of gum before, and I gave it to them. And when he had some gum a week later, he wouldn't give me a piece. And You're I a felt, sick man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, I got into a fight with Larry. I'm, I'm sorry. You know? Do you mean to tell me that there's a psychiatrist out there whose job it is to work for the Department of Transportation and talk to people about that? Uh, yeah. It's not exactly Frasier territory. Well, you know, it's the same. <laughs> no, it's the same test that police officers and firefighters have to take. I just don't think that we're on that same type of level, but yeah. Well, I've come home at 3 o'clock in the morning and my wife's had 1,400 questions for me. <laughs> that, that's different. You that's know, why yeah, I'm not married. You answer them right, you will get benefits. All right? She even slipped in, are you still paying attention? In yes, there? that's yeah. true. That was number 1,200. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's standard. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy because they wanted to make sure you stayed consistent. Uh, question number five, are, have you ever been intimate with an animal? Mm, no. The question number 78, uh, have you been, ever been sexually attracted to your pet? You know, what if you said you... not my pet? <laughs> they didn't specify. Oh, well, it was just some heavy petting, okay? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I went through a lot just to get the job, you know. Apparently, but yeah. I mean, but, but and what was the rationale for asking about animals when you're just giving tickets to cars and people? I have no idea, okay? And I don't want to know. I don't want to know what kind of freaky stuff other park enforcement officers just mm-hmm. did. I just wanted to make some money, you know, and get out of there as soon as I could. But they did prepare you, they let you yeah. know, like right off the bat like you know listen you know people are not gonna like you you're gonna be called you know you know you have to almost agree like i john moody agree and understand that people will call me out of my name i john moody agree and understand that from time to time there'll be dog feces on my door handle oh. right true story it has happened to park enforcement oh, officers well, that's you, know? <laughs> you, you weren't attracted to the dog feces i hope no, no i was not attracted to the dogs nor the dog feces no uh, no, well, no, no 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 why didn't i think yeah of that? You know, you had to agree to everything. You know, I agree that upon my demise, I will be going straight to hell because not even the devil wants park enforcement officers uh, hanging out with. Me. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> no, for real? <laughs> okay. No, no, that's 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 not. No, no, <laughs> that very that gullible. True. No, no, not at all. Okay. But yeah, no, no. Listen, man. After a certain time, you get used to people hitting their horns. You don't even look up because you're gonna get the one finger salute. Mm-hmm. You know, people. Uh, yeah, you look up, and even your friends. Your friends. Oh. You're going to go out there and be, a, you know, be an a-hole to people now, aren't you? And I'm just like, man, it's, it's a job. I'm just trying to make a living. But it was, um, was kind of messed up in the sense that the city had a budget for 100 new officers. But they said, hey, let's – no, I'm sorry, 35 full-time officers. But what they did is they hired 100 part-time officers. Uh, no benefits – and uh, I think it started at like 17 bucks an hour. Well, dog feces is kind of a benefit. Well, no, not really. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you have to get into the other side. And, oh, you know, yeah, yeah exactly. Thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You don't, you know, you don't mm-hmm. want to touch that stuff. You think? You know what I did? To, frank, <laughs> frankly, last Sunday, um, I was uh, walking my aunt's dog when I was visiting her, and I haven't uh, ever, I don't think in my life, dealt with picking up dog poop because when when I had dogs as a kid. We would just leave it in our yard until it dried up and then deal with it, right? But, oh, my God. So what I did was uh, this dog just wouldn't stop. It went, like, three times up and down the block. But it was going in people's big bushes where it would be hard to really tell. So I just pretended that I'd bend over and act like I was picking it up on walking. There's no way I'm doing that. You're the worst. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Even our sound guy's like, that's awful. And that was our first uh, Carl's childhood tangent. Yeah, that was, that was scary. Childhood? That was last Sunday. Dude. Yeah. I'm going to go get that psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, by the way, our sound guy is a very funny, and you'll hear him hopefully laughing sometimes. So, Dave, if you feel like something's awful, just yell it out. And we'll, mm-hmm. we'll yeah, don't, the don't censor yourself on our account. Yeah. So, uh, anyways... Um, then did you know at the start that people would react horribly to giving tickets or did you think, oh, okay, it's just a job and then you were shocked to find out the responses? No, no, you know because you talk to your friends and I've gotten tickets before. You're like ruining people's days professionally. Right, exactly. Listen, no matter what happens, 
you're going to ruin someone's day, mm-hmm. all right? Their, their day is going to be ruined. They can have a menage a trois with Carrie, Katy Perry and with Beyonce, and they're going to get the ticket and be like, my day's ruined. I need because, some dog feces. Yeah, and look, you can walk in on your dad and your brother having a menage a trois <laughs> with your fiance, and you're going to get a ticket and say, my day's ruined. Mm-hmm. Okay, that it's going to be the worst thing in your what? day. It's already going to be bad if your dad and somebody are having... But you're going to remember the ticket. You're going to get that <laughs> oh. ticket and say, you know what? Now, okay. my day's sure. crap now. Extra crap. You know, yeah, okay, yeah. The right. ticket is going to stand out. I'm telling you. Can I ask you, how many times did people call you a fascist? Um, I was never called a fascist. Hmm. Oh. No. Do you think... Oh God, well, this what, is what? a horrible, obvious question, but I shouldn't have even started to utter. But Go ahead. Do you think it's because people don't normally think of black folks as fascists? They just think it's like white power structure? I'm going to tell you, if people... There were other names. Being a brother, there were other names I got oh, called. I and it, okay, yeah. Fascist is kind of high. Yeah, that's with, not that's a little the bit. first thing. When, yes. you, when you want to slur a black dude, the first word that comes to mind isn't fascist. So. I was going to say, I didn't think I recognized you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so what were some of the things that people said that were not involving the letter N? Um, I had to put a bullet in your skull was one. Ooh, wow. See, that's a crime, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I was told, well, to you do it or even say it. No, you should, you, to say yeah. it, it's a threat. Really? Yeah. It's a threat. I wow. mean, you know, people are, bl- but you know, when you say it, walking away, I'm not really going to put much into it versus, yeah. you know, running up to him. I'm going to put a bullet in your skull. You know, that didn't happen. <laughs> so, you know, walking away, I get it. People are blowing off steam. I mean, you don't appreciate it. You don't like it. But what it is, man, is is pretty much it's people who are, you know, pissed off and they say something to you and, and depending on what type of officer you are, you either take that and you take it out on the next person and write somebody a ticket because their windshields are dirty or whatever. No, you can't do that. I'm just saying, Ooh. you know, but you can be really petty with the job if you chose to, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's one of those things where you get a little bit of power and depending upon the type of person you are, then you exercise that power mm-hmm. or not. Were you depressed when you came home that kind of thing? Oh, man, dude. I mean, all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, because, again, I remember one day, and it's crazy because it's like I'm dishing out, like, misery during the day, and then at night I'm going on stage and telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which, some, depending how the set goes, it could be dishing misery, but I, I don't know. Well, I got some of my best material from the job, oh, for yeah, sure, sure, because you just see crazy stuff during yeah. the day, you know, and I was I didn't keep the job long because I was I was too kind. I didn't, You know, a lot of times I just wouldn't write the ticket. Um, one of my favorite stories is uh, I come across this one car, man. It is. It is a piece of crap, all right? And, you know, you should never put a ticket on a car that isn't worth the cost of the ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if they, the dude had $75, he'd have a skateboard or, a, you know, something like that, something better than what he had. But um, I'm getting ready to issue the citation, and this elderly couple comes, you know, they can't run, but they're walking fast out of like a, you know, uh, they, they went, it was a doctor's office of some sort, and the guy had a bad back, and uh, I think he was seeing a chiropractor or something, and they're just, you know, like, oh my God, please, no, don't write this ticket. And the woman is almost in tears. She goes, I had my neighbor bring me here. He didn't want to do it. And now he's going to get a ticket. And he's like, I just got a ticket last week. I can't afford it. And I'm just uh-huh. like, oh my God. But what I realized is I didn't hit enter. So... I was able to like wipe the ticket out and the lady says, thank you so much. And she goes into her purse and she's getting ready to ham. I'm like, man, no, I can't, you know, that's, sure, sure, that's, sure. I'm going to get in trouble for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a crime. <laughs> she hands me a photo of herself topless from way back in the day. Wow. Way back in the Depending day. how she looks, that could be awful, but probably not. But well, still. you know what? It was barely color. That's okay. A 50 cent oh. one. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting a piece that's of hard so candy. Hard. No, no. Yeah. It was a lot. Lo- no, but think about Something this. was hard, but this woman walked around with the photograph of a <laughs> yes. topless photograph of herself from like the seventies. All right. I mean, I'm, you know, maybe she submitted it to Hugh. God rest his soul. God bless him. Um, <laughs> but I was like, um, I can't take that either. But um, hey, uh, you looked really nice. Did you say <laughs> I, I need two forms of ID? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why? Yeah, no, why? Why did she have that with her? I, guess. I don't That's know. Wrong. I mean, again, it's Los Angeles, man. Yeah. So you know, maybe she figured, you know, I don't have a headshot, <laughs> but hey, the, hey, here you go. Did you? Uh, okay, so you were saying sometimes you uh, would avoid giving a ticket for reasons like that. Was there a quota expected of you to reach every month or no? no? That's a good question, man. Everybody thinks there's a quota, and there absolutely is no quota. Number one, it's illegal to have a quota for citations. And number two, mm. they don't want you to stop writing, okay? If there's oh, yeah. a quota Uh-oh. and you get to, like, number 25, then you're not going to write more than 25. They want you to – especially. Well, was the, there a bonus per ticket? I've always wondered no, about my, that. Oh, God, no, because, again, if there was a bonus for tickets, then you would just give tickets out for, like, you know, dirty windshields mm-hmm. or whatever. I don't like the color of that car. Whatever the case may be. I no, figured man. you guys worked on commission. No, no, no. Again, yeah, yeah no, man. You got people who just want to do it and just be – listen, man, I've seen people, like, write, write citations just because – 
um, you know, a, a tire is just like on the white line yeah. of the aprons, and it's like, what, what, why, what for, man? You know, <clears throat> but it, it's interesting. It's almost like kindergarten, man. Like again, you know, we got nothing extra, but people would compare how many citations they wrote at the end of the day to see who wrote the most. Mm-hmm. It's almost like that star you got on your forehead when you were <laughs> in kindergarten, except you didn't get the star. You just got to walk away with the feeling that I wrote the most tickets, and yeah. that. I mean, we I, there was one dude, man, who would like. Roll up in the churches looking for people parked in the handicap zones. Oh, oh like, my lord. Yeah, right, exactly. And I'm like, damn, these are my co-workers? Wow. You so know. you feel like people got a little taste of authority? 